the outfit is in many ways a chess match between all of these different characters. Um, and what's helped in that is there are not too many characters in this film. There's only seven speaking parts in the entire film. So every character gets quite a bit of screen time. Um, and more than that, every character gets quite a bit of listening time. As we're, as we're making the film, something we find a lot is that the story is not on the character who's speaking, it's on the character who's listening and trying to decide, am I being lied to or not? If I'm being lied to, do I need to kill this person? That's where the story is. And there's something so inherently cinematic about that. Um, you know, the, it's set in a small space with a small cast, but yet it feels so inherently cinematic to me because those looks between the characters, someone looking very closely at someone else from just inches away and saying, are you lying to me? Do I have to kill you now? You can't do that on stage in a piece of theater. You cannot get that close. Very early on in writing the script, um, Jonathan and I said to each other, what if the entire film takes place inside the tailor shop? What if we never leave? And like everything we do, it was an experiment. It was, let's do a draft where we never leave the shop. How does that feel? Um, and what we quickly found was that something that might seem constraining opened the world up to us. Um, because we knew that it would, staying, what we found is that staying inside the shop is not a kind of narrative conceit, but rather it's staying with our main character. It's staying with Leonard. Leonard ne never leaves the shop, so neither do we. It just gets us inside his head. Um, we don't see anything he doesn't see. We don't hear anything he doesn't hear. We don't go anywhere he doesn't go. The whole story takes place over about 48 hours in the life of the shop, and he never leaves the shop the entire time we're there. So neither does our camera, neither does our story. What that means, I think, in a really exciting way is that when new characters enter, when Roy Boyle enters, when Violet LaFontaine enters, they're, they're coming in from another movie that has taken place off screen. Um, and we get to find fun ways of bringing that movie in with them, to sort of showing their whole history, their whole story as they enter. Who is this person? Who is this person? Where have they been? Who have they murdered? You know, what's, what is the off-screen war that is happening between these different crime families that we sort of see glimpses of as they enter the shop? We loved the idea of the 50s of this period, like the last the last gasp of this beautiful culture that happened before fashion took over. It was also a really interesting period in terms of the gangland history of the time. Once we started digging, once Jonathan McLean and I started digging into the gangland history of 50 Chicago, it was instantly captivating to us because as America was going through profound changes, so was the underworld. 